If you ever wondered what happened if you put the top 20 teams in FIFA 23 in one league, let me show you. This is exactly what you get. These are the top ranked teams in FIFA 23 right now. And I have a plan. I will take all of them on with the team of the minute. The team that everyone talks about these days. It of course has to be Napoli. Guys, Farash Kelia and Aussie men are doing a madness. And today... We're going to be trying to win the Super League with Napoli. I actually realized, for some reason, I haven't done a single Napoli video. What am I doing with my life? If you aren't living under a rock, my friends, you know that this right here is Napoli's team. And it has incredible players in it. Aussie men. The guy just cannot sc stop scoring. Kvarashkelia. Kvaradona. He cannot stop stealing past people and creating incredible moments, scoring goals and getting assists. You have so many great players in this team, but obviously those two are the most famous ones that everyone keeps talking about these days. You have Zielinski, Zambo Agisa, Lobotka, Lozano, Di Lorenzo, Rahmani, Kim Min Jae. Such an amazing center back. Mario Rui at left back and Mere in goal. Now that is the Napoli team that we currently have in FIFA. But right now, as we speak, Napoli in the Serie A is on 71 points. And Lazio, the second place team, is 19 points behind them. I mean, this is unheard of. Now, for me today, the big task is, since we do have this great team that is dominating Serie A right at the moment, I thought, which way can I rebuild this team and make it interesting? Now, as you guys have seen initially, I have put all the best teams in the world into one league. The reason behind that is I want to see what Napoli can do against the best clubs out there. Obviously, they are not ranked all the way up top when it comes to this league right now. So they will have to work their way to the top. But here's the catch. I am not allowed to make any transfers from the teams that are within this league. So that's how it's going to go. And we will have to avoid all those incredible talents. But I do feel like we can create an incredible journey here. And the goal is to win the title, of course. I think it only makes sense to start off with an Argentinian. Of course, Napoli and their history is tied to Diego Armando Maradona, but I am going for Ezequiel Palacios. This man has just broken my heart today. Scored two goals against Bayern Munich, and it looks like he has revived his career. For a long time, he wasn't in the starting 11 at Bayer Leverkusen, but now he's going to be a big part player for us here at Napoli. I personally am not a massive fan of Ndombele. I was at one point, but after his time in di at different clubs, I am a bit disappointed with Ndombele. I feel like he has the Dele Ali disease, but Palacios is here, and he's going to be competing to take over from the light of Lobotka. I know Lobotka is a very reliable player in that midfield, so I am aware that he's decent and he can do a good job, but that was the first transfer I had to do. I needed to get the highest rated Argentinian player into this team that I possibly could without buying a player from those top teams. First season is finished and I'm seeing wins and losses. Okay, maybe we're like a mid-table team. Is that what we are? No. That's rough. <laughs> We are last. We are dead last in the league. 28 points just below Arsenal. Who has won the Super League? Let's see. It's Real Madrid. Congratulations to them. I'm actually watching El Clasico right now. Don't know if I mentioned it already. It's 1-1, 55th minute. It's a back and forth between the both teams. El Clasico is not necessarily the same it used to be, though. Let's be honest, guys. Do you enjoy it as much as when Ronaldo played against Messi? Those times were different. Both teams were incredible. Right now, I just don't know, man. I'm not feeling it yet. Maybe one day, if... I don't know, Haaland goes to Real and Mbappe goes to Barca for some reason. <laughs> That'd be great. But uh, yeah, the team clearly didn't do well enough. Ozyman has grown to an 87, which is incredible. Kvaraskelia plus four. Lozano exactly the same as we started the season. We have Lobotka on the 82. Zambo Angisa has gone up nicely. 84 rated. He actually looks very good. Zielinski up to an 84. Mario Rui looks solid. He's actually one of the best players for Napoli. But he like plays one game, doesn't play the next as far as I can remember, which is so odd. Kim Min Jae is amazing. 82 rated. It's a plus two for him. Di Lorenzo, Cap uh, El Capitan, 83 rated. And Mere with the plus two. On the bench, 
Palacios has done well as a player that we have brought into the club, but clearly we are nowhere near the top of the league. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. The two that we expected to do well have done well, but new transfers are desperately needed. Massive changes have to come in this new season, and I've made my decision, guys. We have to let go of a bunch of players. Zielinski is going for 60 million before he turns 30, and we lose a lot of value. He had to go alongside Di Lorenzo, and for some weird reason, Palacios forced his way out of the club. Like, I brought him into the team. I didn't tell him he would be a crucial first team player or anything like that. And then just after one season, he's already forcing his way out. I really don't understand how EA is coding these things because if I'm bringing in someone as a backup, he has to know that he's just a backup. He shouldn't just force his way out after one season. Lozano with a 29.5 million transfer. Rahmani has gone for 17.7. Mario Rui for 17.5, leaving us with this team right here. Now, looking at it, you don't necessarily see too many downgrades in midfield and attack, but you can definitely see the downgrades in defense. So we'll have to work on a lot of things right here and strengthen up that defense and maybe even more because now after the sales, our budget is at 275 million that's a lot of money. Now that I can't buy players for the top teams because they're all in our league, I have to look outside of these to find the best players I can get. And Lucharel Gertrudia, who has actually scored, I believe, the winner today against Ajax in the biggest game in the Netherlands for the title, basically. They now have a six-point lead. Feyenoord is looking incredible. I'm so happy for them because I'm a big fan of Kukchu. But Gertrudia is here. And he is here to stay, 23 years old, six foot one tall right back who can easily play center back as well. But for center back, we're gonna need someone else. And he is on a team that he just beat. Of course, I am talking about Timber. Ajax's center back is coming into our team. And man, he is good. He's very good, especially moving forward with the ball. There aren't many uh, center backs out there that can progress with the ball as well as he does. And he just is an incredible talent, man. I can't wait to see where he actually ends up. But at Ajax, he's ridiculous. He comes in now, takes over that right centre-back position for us. Pace, dribbling, defending, physicality. Could possibly also play right back or even CDM, actually. But yeah, we're going to keep him in that centre-back position for us. A huge signing for our club. And now I have to look for a new left-back and possibly another centre-mid and another right wing. Sosa is the left back that I can bring in into the club. He's one of the only ones, genuinely speaking. The other ones are too low rated and they would be a downgrade from what we have already. Borna Sosa is a Stuttgart left back who has tons of assists this season in real life. And this guy is going to be huge. I can see him get a massive move by the end of the season. It honestly would not surprise me if he goes to one of the top clubs in world football. He's very much capable of pulling off anything that you can ask from a fullback. So Sosa is the one, and I do believe he will grow along with other players in this team. Now we focus on that position. Forget about the midfielder. I'm going for something much better. I am going in for the man who scored from halfway on the pitch against Arsenal. Pedro Gonçalves is the sporting right wing slash left wing slash cam. He can basically play anywhere. This guy is coming into our team, and I am so happy to welcome him. He is going to be a partner to Ozimen and Kvaraskelia up top. No more Lozano. He comes in instead of Politano as well, and comes in with an 84 rating, which is obviously huge. And I like the fact that we have Politano and also Oliveira now as backups in this team because we need good players on the bench as well. So that is a massive signing. And I think that's it because I am actually turning Elmas into a center mid. And it only takes two weeks, so we should be fine there. To be able to compete with the best, you have to sign the best. And I have just sold Lobotka, taking my budget and also a bunch of other players, taking my budget to 135 million again, which means I was able to sign Bruno Guimaraes. I'm so happy to bring him in because this guy is going to be the main center mate of this team. Cost me 105 million, by the way, but... He comes in straight away into the starting 11. Yes, the bench now looks a bit weaker as well, I will have to admit. But it might just be worth it to, st to strengthen that starting 11. Because now, it looks amazing. Kessier has just scored! 92nd minute, Barcelona are winning! 
the El Clasico at home. Wow, incredible stuff, honestly, guys. And we are apparently in the cup final. So good stuff. Kessier, congratulations. So happy for him because obviously hasn't had the most playtime at Barcelona. And uh, yeah, their stadium is shaking. So maybe this was a much better season because we have made it to the cup final. Let's see if we can win this one right here. Ozymen on a 90, Kvaraskelia 89, and we do win it, which means next season we get European football, but then again, you shouldn't take European football too serious because we have all the best teams in the world in this league anyways, but there might be some good ones developing outside of this league, so we'll see that later on because obviously some other teams have to go ahead and win the league somewhere else now in the top five leagues, and that might give them a lot of money to buy some great players, but here it is. League table, let's see where we have finished off. We have finished in the 10th position. So that is massive improvement, right? Because last time we were 19th. This time it's Roma at the bottom alongside Leipzig. Villarreal is hanging out at the bottom. Arsenal has moved up the league table along with us. And at the top, we have Manchester City with 75 points. But you can see the top team in the division has 12 draws and three losses. The second team in the division has five draws, eight losses. It is incredibly competitive, and that's what I wanted to create right here. But Napoli is climbing up that league table, and one day we want to be at the top. We obviously have some world-class players with Ozymen, Kvaraskelia, and now Guimaraes as well on an 89. Gonçalves on a... Or is it Gonçalves? Is that how you say it? Uh, 87 rated. Elmas looks all right. Zambo hasn't grown because probably last season was horrible for a lot of these players. And you can tell, the ones that were here last season have struggled in terms of growth, uh, especially defensively and midfield. But the new ones that have come in are looking very, very good. So good stuff. Bench definitely needs to improve. And uh, I need that money for the next season. So that should come around very, very soon. Top scorer is the new man. 22 and 4, Pedro Gonçalves. Okay. I am impressed. So I have decided to not let Getrudia by himself. And, of course, go in for the Feyenoord midfielder, Kirk Drew. This guy is incredible. I cannot wait to see what kind of move he gets. I've been following him insanely in the past two years, I guess. And now he is here. He's going to take over that center midfield position from Elmas because he's higher rated. 57 million plus Oliveira. Elmas goes down to the bench, which... Hopefully, will help us out in the long run. And uh, the goalkeeper can be taken out. Kukchu comes in, 85 rating. He can basically do it all. He doesn't have necessarily an insane pace on him. But lately, I've been seeing him sprint a lot faster than usual. So something has changed about him. But generally speaking, this guy can shoot, pass, defend, do anything. And for that reason, he's the perfect partner alongside Guimaraes. So yeah, avoided the big top five league teams once again and found ourselves a proper hero for the team. So the season's come to an end, and this time around in Europa League, we have lost against Olympique Lyon. Well, okay, so be it. 2025 in March, and guys, the team is strong. It's very, very strong. Kvaras Kelia has taken over here. 92 rate. He had a lot more growth than Ozymen, who I believe only grew by plus one. Gonçalves looks great. Guimaraes looks amazing. Zambo is going up in his stats. He's 29 years old. Probably have like another two good years in him. Kukchu here with the 88. Sosa, incredible. Oh, the entire back line has gone to an 87. That's amazing. And then Merit. That's probably the only one where I'm like sat there thinking, do I replace him? But then again, he's only 28 years old. So there's still time for him to grow. But we could possibly drop him down to the bench depending on the performances. Now, performances are obviously incredibly important. Top four. That is much better. So we have climbed up the table in the Super League right now. We are nearly at the top. Fourth position for Napoli. That is amazing. I'm extremely proud of this team. Napoli to the top. Let's get this done. Ozzy men 32 and 2. Gonzalez 8 and 15 and 8. Parashkelia, as I mentioned, one of the better seasons from him for sure. And Kukju coming in and performing on that top level straight away alongside Bruno. This season was a really good one. Can't say anything negative about it, but I do want to challenge for that title. There's a couple of points we need to pick up to be able to get there, though. Diogo Costa is walking into the club. Porto's goalkeeper just today kept a clean sheet against Braga away from home, which is one of the toughest games to play in Portugal. And... 
He's great. He is coming into the team for Mere plus 20 million. We are upgrading ever so slightly for our team. I'm actually very happy that he has come in here. And uh, yeah, he is going to be a huge asset to us. I fully believe he will grow much faster than Mere. So that is a great signing for us. And then I think I need to fill up the bench a little bit. We need some offensive players for sure. And uh, yeah, maybe some midfielders as well. Let's get going. First up, bringing in a player who actually has a face scan. I didn't even know he did. I think that's new. Zebaios, a wonderfully talented Boca Juniors player, is coming into our team right now. Ezequiel Zebaios, I'm excited to see where he moves to in Europe after his time in Argentina. He is going to be an amazing backup for our team. 79 rated. We don't need a center attack mid on the bench technically, but I guess I'll keep him there. I'm also going for a striker. I can't wait to show you who it is. And here he comes. The backup striker I'm excited about is a striker that plays for Atalanta. It's Rasmus Oilund. He apparently plays for Besiktas right now. They are getting a, a little bit of money rain coming into their club. And he is 81 rated. Now, that is going to be huge because finally, Ozyman has someone that can support him off the bench. And just generally speaking, our bench is looking much better already. So let's go into the season. I want that title. All right, the season ended and we failed miserably. We got the L against Rangers. I can't believe that, but in the league, here's the moment of truth. Are we the top in the division? Napoli, please. No, second. Second place. We are behind Real Madrid, who are dominating this league right now. Congratulations to them. And at the bottom, we have Leipzig. Roma, Manchester United, Arsenal, Chelsea, all those teams struggling big time. Liverpool holding themselves in the top 10. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look into the team, guys. Let's see what we have going here. Para and Ozzy, both on 93. Guimaraes and Kukchu, all above 90. Gonçalves up to a 91. Back line, two players on the right-hand side have gone up by plus one, or plus two, actually. And then the ones on the left haven't been able to catch up to them. Costa up to an 87. Only a plus one this season, but that's fine. Hoylund and Zebaios looking very, very good. Elmas looks very solid as well. So we have made the right decisions right here, but we haven't been able to achieve the biggest trophy of them all, which is obviously the league title. What is it going to take for us to pull that off? The Super League is extremely competitive. Ozymen, 31 and 4. Kirkju, 20 and 12. This is exactly what you want to see. Guys, I like this, but we need to do something. We need to get maybe one or two extra players onto the bench. It only makes sense to go for a new winger to replace the one we have on the bench that I'm not too happy with. Obviously, I like Zebaios, but I also like Antonio Nusa. This guy supposedly is an absolutely incredible talent. I've heard former Bruges players talk about him and say they have not seen a talent like him in a long time. So I'm very, very excited to see where he ends up in the future. But he hasn't even gotten plenty of playtime at Bruges yet. So he has to break through and become a starting 11 player. Get past players like Noah Lang, I assume. But here he is, 82 rated. I like that a lot. You know what? This guy, ah, we'll just keep him there. But those guys here, they will make the difference. I feel like this could be the season. Halfway through the season, we are in the first position. This might be it. This might be the time where we get it all done, guys. Huge props to the team for getting this far with absolutely no losses. Oh, yeah. We are him now. You know that meme where they say that's him? Yep. We are him right now. And here goes the second half of the season. We're going to watch along on this one. We have finally lost a game against Arsenal. But honestly, guys, as we go through this, I have to say that I am so impressed by what Napoli is doing. I'm actually very happy for them. Like, I can't wait for them to actually win the title because obviously Napoli, the city itself, back then when they won it with, Mar with Maradona, all those players became legends, especially Maradona. So now to win it... It would make players like Ozymen and Kvarashkelia, who they call Kvaradona, legends in that city. And I cannot wait to see that happen. I like those types of stories. We get beat, we get beat by West Ham in the Europa League, by the way. But things are going quite well in the league, from what I can tell. 4-0 against Chelsea, 2-0 against Barca, 2-1 against Bayern Munich. And now a win against Manchester United. Last game against Real, 3-0 in the cup. We get a draw. And then it's Liverpool and 
It might just be done. I don't know if it's done. I have no clue. Have we gotten the league title? Has Napoli won it? Yes, they have. Napoli are the best team in the world. 87 points. Now, obviously, since this doesn't have like a final game that I can play against one of the teams, this will mean that we go ahead and basically end it at the end of the season right here. But 87 points for Napoli, guys. This is incredible. I love that. Next time when I do something like the Super League stuff, I probably should go into like the MLS because the MLS has the MLS Cup final. I think the, the teams play the regular season and then they go on to, you know, play against each other. And then the, whoever wins the final kind of wins the league type of thing. So maybe next time we do it over there. But I'm proud of this team because we have created a monster here. Parashkelia, 94. Ozyman, 94. Gonsalves looking solid. Guimaraes and Kukju holding down centre midfield. Zambo and Gisa, as one of the originals, has stuck around. Sosa is here. Kim Min Jae, once again original, looks solid. 90 rated alongside Timber and Hethrudia. And then Costa, obviously, very, very good. And on the bench, even players like Elmas have done well going up to an 86. I'm actually pretty impressed with what this team has been able to achieve. But that is how Napoli could be looking anytime in the future, guys. 37 and 6 from Ozyman. I wonder where he goes to. Let me know in the comments down below where you think he's going to go to. He's apparently a huge Drogba fan, as I mentioned, I believe. And yeah, Chelsea would make a lot of sense. They need a striker. Gonçalves, 23 and 10. Cook to 22 and 11. Parashkelia, 13 and 14. To say goodbye to this right here. We have done it, guys. I'm extremely happy about the fact that we have pulled this off in the Super League. A different type of rebuild today. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you on the next one. Have a great day. Take care and peace.